Intro to Symbolic Logic. This is Lesson 2.7c. We have 11 previous videos for Chapter 2 that are linked in the description in the Geometry Playlist if you need them. So we're going to be talking about compound statements, conjunctions, disjunctions. We're also going to talk about the Law of Disjunctive Inference and De Morgan's Laws. Computer programmers, mathematicians, and philosophers use symbolic logic to analyze the truth value of statements independent of their actual meaning. So in higher math and philosophy courses, you'll see symbolic logic used. A compound statement is created by combining two or more statements. Suppose P and Q both represent a statement. Two compound statements can be made by combining P and Q, a conjunction and a disjunction. Now we're going to be dealing with some symbols here. The logical conjunction symbol means AND. That's this orange pointing up thing here. It's called a caret. The logical disjunction symbol means OR, and it's called a karen, and it's like a V. It's like an upside down caret, see? I've got some notes for you. We've got some compound statements. Our term is conjunction, and it means a compound statement that uses the word AND. For symbols, we would have P and Q. We could write P, then this caret, and then the Q for P and Q. An example would be Bob is a band member and Bob plays soccer. So either both are true or both are false. Both would have to be true for this conjunction to be true. And I can remember that this is AND because it sort of looks like an A, except we just needed to cross the A, didn't we? So it's sort of like an A for AND. A disjunction, that's a compound statement that uses the word OR. So we would have P OR Q, P Karen Q, the Karen symbol, see, for OR. And we would read it as P OR Q. So Bob is a band member or Bob plays soccer. In this case, one or the other is true. See? A conjunction is true only when all of its parts are true. A disjunction is true if any of its parts are true. So this statement is true, this compound statement is true because he's going to be either one or the other. See? And if both are, both are false, then the disjunction is false. See? We can analyze the truth values of conjunctions and disjunctions. We can use P, Q, and R to find the truth value of each compound statement. So P says Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States. Q says the day after Monday is Tuesday. Well, so far, both of those are true. R says California is the largest state in the United States. Hmm, if you know your U.S. geography, you know that's false. So P and Q are true and R is false. So if we said... Q or R, we would say the day after Monday is Tuesday or California is the largest state. Well, that's true because one of the parts is true. The day after Monday is Tuesday or California is the largest state. If we said, P, if we said R and P, then we would be saying California is the largest state and Washington, D.C. is the capital. Well, since R is false, the conjunction is false because in a conjunction, they both have to be true. Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States, that's true, but Alaska is actually the largest state in the United States. California is the most populated with 37 million people. I think Alaska has around 700,000. So area-wise, land area-wise, Alaska is actually the largest state in the United States. California's just got more people. A table that lists all the possible combinations of truth values for a statement is called a truth table. Well, that's very appropriately named. A truth table shows you the truth value of a compound statement based on the possible truth values of its parts. So if we had these P and Q statements that are both true, we could say, well, P is true, then Q is true, P therefore Q, that's true, P and Q, that's true, and P or Q, that would be true. But if we had a true and a false, then P therefore Q would be false, P and Q would be false, but P or Q would be true because part of it would be true, see? 
So we can make these truth tables and put T or F for true and false in them. We can evaluate symbolic statements in an organized way with a truth table. And we've learned how to determine whether a logical argument is valid based on the law of detachment or the law of syllogism. We did that in an earlier video. If you don't remember that, what that is, the law of detachment says if P, therefore Q, is a true statement and P is true, then Q is true. And the law of syllogism says if P, then Q, and Q, then R, are true statements, then P then R is a true statement. And this was the one that was sort of like the transitive property. A equals B, B equals C, so A equals C, okay? By representing statements with symbols, we can evaluate the validity of an argument without being distracted by the words themselves. A truth table gives us a systematic way to consider the different combinations of true and false statements that make up a logical argument. We can construct a truth table for the compound statement. This is not U and V or W. So U, V, and W are going to be sentences, statements. And because U, V, and W can each be either true or false, the truth table will have two times two times two, which equals eight rows. So the statement for U could be true or false, V could be true or false, W could be true or false. So we do two times two times two, so we make eight rows. Starting here, this is just the header, okay? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So here's my statements. For statement U, I have a dog named Lola. Well, if you're a subscriber, you know, you know I have a dog named Lola. V, I am a grandmother. Also, if you're a subscriber, you know I'm a grandmother. W, I make math videos. Well, that's kind of given, isn't it? So we can take the truth value of these statements, they're all true, and in our truth table, we can say, well, U is true, V is true, W is true. So this is the logical negation symbol. That means not U. That means I, I do not have a dog named Lola. Well, that would be false. And if I said I am a grandmother or I make math videos, well, that would be true because I am a grandmother or make math videos. Actually, I do both. And for our final one, it would be not U. So I don't have a dog named Lola and... I am a grandmother or make math videos. Well, that's false because the first part is false. I do have a dog named Lola and saying I don't. We fill out the truth table according to the truth value of the statements, see? So or in math is inclusive, which means one or the other or both. It could be either, see? But when we use it in English, it's exclusive, which means one or or the other, but not both, okay? So it's gonna be a little different. In math, it could be A, it could be B, or it could be A and B, see what I'm saying? In English, it's just A or B, that's it, not both. So disjunctions are true if any of its parts are true because of this, all right? So if A is true and B is false, then it's still true, okay? Because one part, is true. There's some symbols we've learned. These are for the conditional statements. If we have a hypothesis, then conclusion would be if P, then Q. And we could write it with our arrow pointing to the side saying P, therefore Q. For biconditional statements, we've got P if and only if Q. So I don't know if you remember, but if and only if can be abbreviated to IFF. So we have P, IFF, Q. And if P, then Q, and if Q, then P, would be P with a two-sided arrow, Q, means P, therefore Q, and Q, therefore P, all right? So now let's get into this funny symbol I'm using for not. A lot of you have in your textbook this symbol for not. And what it means is, is similar to, has distribution, is row equivalent to, for like matrices, poorly approximates, approximates, is asymptotically equivalent to, it also means in the same equivalence class. So, and it can mean not. So I prefer not to use it because math is confusing enough. This symbol here is the logical negation symbol that means not. It doesn't mean anything else. So there's less confusion if you just use this backwards sideways L, okay? So, that's what we're going to use for not. 
Here's De Morgan's law. Not P and Q is equal to not P or not Q. I know this is confusing. I've got some sentences to back this up in a second. And that not P or Q is equal to not P and not Q. All right. So that's De Morgan's law. Let's take a look at this. I have a cat. Well, that's false. My cat is gray. That's also false because I don't have a cat. So P is false. I don't have a cat. Q is false. I don't have a gray cat. So De Morgan's law says if it's not P and Q, then it's not P or Q. Then I don't have a cat or I don't have a cat that's gray. See? And that not P or Q is equal to not P and Q. So if I don't have a cat or a gray cat, then it's not P and Q. See? It's not either of them. So that's De Morgan's laws. Now, the law of disjunctive inferences says if P or Q is true and P is false, then Q must be true. Because remember, for the disjunctions, at least one part of it has to be true. So if we know P is false, then Q must be true. Okay? So here we have P. I have a cat. That's false. I don't have a cat. I have two dogs. Q is I make math videos. Well, that's true. So P is false. I don't have a cat. Q is true. I do make math videos. The law of disjunctive inference says if P or Q is true and P is false, then Q must be true. If I don't have a cat, P is false, then I must make math videos. See? So I know this can be a lot to take in. You might have to watch the video again a second time. And you're going to have to play with these truth tables and try to remember what all these symbols are. And I'll talk to you next time in Chapter 3. We're going to discuss lines and angles and identify types of lines and planes in 3.1a. So remember, all my little yellow hands mean it was important information and you should have written it down, okay? All right? I'll see you next time. Bye.